2023 in review. Hi, I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. And this is the DIY Detail Podcast. Today, we're going to go over the top five fan favorites for your feedback. There's a lot of Fs going on there. But nonetheless, what we're going to be doing is we've got a lot of feedback. We answer a lot of questions. We love answering your questions. And please, if you have questions, leave them below. That being said, these are the top five subjects that people have gone. You guys have really changed how I detail this way. And they are, Nick. Well, we're going to save the best one for last. So I want you to stay tuned for that. But I think the first one to talk about is just how we've demystified polishing for people and how much of an impact that has made. So I wonder if, Ivan, we could talk about some of the big things you want people to remember, learn, if they didn't catch those earlier videos. Just some of the biggest lessons about polishing that you feel like have made a difference in people's lives that you think could help them now. Right, so one of them and probably the biggest one is the rotary isn't this big scary monster that's gonna eat your paint. Uh, Rotary is for finishing. Yes, you can cut with a rotary. You can do anything with a rotary. You can do anything with a DA. There's no right or wrong machine to use, but we've demystified the rotary. We came out with the rotary dueling pad specifically for the rotary to make it so that anyone, I mean anyone, can use a rotary simply, easily, and enjoy themselves doing it. Uh, We had our video with Emily the Audi Nerd. She polished her truck. Yes, she's an Audi Nerd, but she also has a truck to drag her race cars around with. And she was just amazed that with a rotary, she actually enjoyed it more than with a DA. And when we were at Car Supplies Warehouse for their creators event, uh, we took Jason's wife, and had her polish as well. And the same thing happened. We had her use a DA, we had her use a rotary. She'd never used a machine before and she preferred the rotary. And that's a a reoccurring theme. So the rotary is not a scary machine. And as far as polishing, again, we showed that you can use just a regular random orbital sander. You don't need to go out and buy a $500 polisher. You can actually polish your car with a sander you probably have at your home already. And, and this, it, is, it, this is targeted for the, the DIY enthusiast, right? So these tips would apply to the pro out there. They will work for you. But yeah. just know that if you're afraid to polish your paint, we're not trying to put so many obstacles in front of you. We're trying to remove the obstacles. So it's actually kind of cool to have a DA sander sitting around as a pro as just a yeah. tool in your arsenal. It is so light. You just palm it with one hand. You're not really going for deep defect removal, but there are times when you may want to just gloss up the paint, remove some oxidation, you know, uh, apply ceramic gloss if, if you if you want to use our rotary Julian pad. Like that yeah. palm sander thing is genius, but really for a lot of people, it may be the only thing they have, and it's proof that with just that, you can get results. And exactly. I think that opened the door for a lot of people. Right, it opens the door. It makes it so that it's not a scary process. A lot of people are afraid to polish their vehicles because they think that if I hold the polisher wrong, I'm gonna burn through the paint. If I spend one second too much, my paint's gonna disappear off the car, I'm gonna go down to raw metal. That's not the case. And we've shown that time and time again. And like you said, we wanna make it so it's enjoyable. We wanna make it so it's not a scary process. And just real quick, run over the rotary polishing techniques. If someone's never used a rotary with our with our just our fat red dueling pad. Uh, yeah. Explain how that how that works real quick, just to give some people some news they can use. Right, so clean damp pad, A. B, the lowest speed your machine will go. No pressure whatsoever. I don't even rest my hand on the machine. I just use a couple fingers to hold the machine. The less you try to hold the machine, the easier it's gonna be. So if you've got a death grip on the machine, you're not gonna have fun. If you just have two fingers on one hand, two fingers on the other hand, just lightly holding the machine, it's gonna go where you want it to go, it's gonna follow you, and it's gonna listen to what you're saying. Also, a clean, clean pad. That, for any polishing, a clean, damp pad makes a huge difference. I wanna get people a pad washer. I want everybody to have our Lake Country 4000 pad washer. It's not ours. We sell it, no. but we don't even make much money on it. The margins aren't great. They take up no. a ton of space in our warehouse. They're really expensive to ship. We just carry them because we teach the system in a certain way. If yeah. folks don't have the pad washer, because they sell out real fast on our website, yeah. what do you recommend? I get folks asking on the chat a lot, well, how many pads do I need to polish a car? And I'll write, just, just one, you know, you get the pad washer. Yeah. But but if you don't have one, then it's a compressed air thing, or are you cleaning the pad out with your hands in the bucket thing? It gets kind of complicated. So how many pads 
And then how do they clean them? You know, well, whether it's a rotary or a DA. Yeah, still just one pad. And a very easy way to clean it. We don't want you soaking a machine in a bucket, right? <laughs> just there's a lot of problems there. Yeah, exactly. But what we've shown, we have a detailing 101 on cleaning your pads. And in that detailing 101, the link is somewhere below here. Uh, basically, what I suggest doing, commandeer a bowl from your kitchen that your pad will fit into. Whatever, it can be an old margarine tub, it can be whatever. As long as your pad fits in it, put a bit of the rinseless wash solution in there, just enough to get your pad damp. Soak it in there, massage the pad a little bit. It stays on the machine because you can't get the whole machine in that bowl. And then in an empty bucket, spin out the pad and just do that. That's all you need to keep your pad clean. And it's actually not much of a longer process than using the pad washer, but it works. It's simple, it's easy. And it's basically no cost whatsoever. Like I said, you're using a, you know, a reusable container uh, and probably you don't want to bring it back to the kitchen. But, uh, or if you have a stainless steel bowl, whatever, it just, you want to get the pad wet, you want to massage a little bit, and then you want to spin out the excess moisture. All right, talking about fan feedback, number two. Yeah. And remember, we're saving the most profound the most amazing, the most life-changing one for the end. So do stay tuned, folks. Yeah. The, the two-bucket method is dead. You don't need two buckets, Ivan, to wash a car. No. Uh, well, actually, we use two buckets, but uh, we use one for wheels, one for the paint. But the two-bucket method, we use the two-foam method. And the two-foam method can be used a couple different ways. One of them is we start with a dry car. We foam on incredible suds. We let it dwell. We let it eat through all that traffic film. Then we rinse it off. Then we foam again. And then we do our contact wash. There's no grit left on the vehicle at that point. We just have a bit of traffic film. It's already emulsified with the first layer of incredible suds. We put another layer of incredible suds. We have great lubrication. It's fun. You've got foam everywhere. You got to use your foam canning. You got to use your pressure washer. You're just enjoying it. Another way of doing it, still one bucket, is a rinseless wash. And the rinseless wash. You can spray on the rinseless wash. You need to get it on the surface somehow. You can spray it on, let it dwell for a few minutes. If you had a lot of grit and accumulation on the vehicle, you're gonna to wanna to rinse it off. And yes, you just said rinseless wash, ain't saying to rinse it off. Rinseless wash means you don't rinse at the end. Right. It doesn't mean you don't rinse beforehand. And then reapply a bit of rinseless wash, do your contact wash, you're good. Some people are doing a hybrid to foam method. And that is foaming with incredible suds, getting that nice thick lather on there, letting it do its thing, grab that dirt, bring it down, rinsing it off, and then doing a rinseless wash. So we have a lot of options, but all those options just include one bucket. Uh, the two bucket method, it works. There's nothing wrong with it. Don't, you know, we don't want you writing in the comments, oh, I use the two bucket method, it's better, no. There's no better, there's no worse. They're just different ways of doing it. And we've given you another option. And as far as I'm concerned, the two bucket method isn't as safe as the two foam method. A lot of people, they will foam their car and immediately start doing the contact wash. They haven't rinsed anything away. They still have all that grit and dirt on the vehicle. And no matter how good your foam is, no matter how lubricating it is, if you're doing a contact wash over that grit, there's an issue there. Foam, rinse, foam, foam, contact wash with two buckets if you want. Yeah. If you want. Sa if you save want. the two buckets after the foam, rinse, foam. But we're talking about replacing the two yeah, it's in it's a different way. It's saving steps. It's saving you don't water. Need the, yeah. yeah. You don't need the second bucket when you do a foam, rinse, foam. The towel, Ivan. Claying, decontaminating, using a towel versus a clay bar. We right. had so many people responding to our perforated synthetic decontamination towel uh, in the comments from our videos, just saying, this has saved me so much time. Yeah, it's definitely saved time. And we'll, you know, again, we'll just explain, there's no clay involved in our clay towel. It's just, that is the industry term for any form of mechanical decontamination is called clay. And most clay bars don't even have clay in them. Uh, but that being said, that's just the industry term, so we're going to go with that. But our perforated synthetic decontamination towel, we call it the clay towel on the website, so don't 
don't look for perforated synthetic decontamination towel on the website. You'll find it. But SEO drives clay towels, so that's why we call it a clay towel. We've made our clay towel different than anybody else's. And there were perforated towels before ours, but we have the mildest and least aggressive clay media or decontamination media. The synthetic media that's on there is not going to mar your paint. And then we've shown how to save money while decontaminating your vehicle. And that's one that we got a lot of comments on. And a lot of people, they'll spray iron remover like it's going out of style, like it's actually cheap. And iron remover isn't cheap. I don't care what brand you're buying, iron remover is an expensive chemical. They spray it on the car, they let it dwell, they see all the little red or orange marks coming down, and then they rinse it off and then they clay. Well, for us, we actually have surfactants built into our iron remover that add lubrication, that add, it actually foams if you want it to foam. But what we're doing is very different in the sense that we're using a lot less of it, therefore you don't get that beautiful fragrance from the iron remover. No one's ever said beautiful fragrance from an iron remover, don't worry, it's, ours doesn't smell any better than anybody else's. Uh, no worse. You, re no you remember how people actually feel about the scent because you get so used to it as a detailer, but when a first timer uses it, yeah. they're like in shock at the smell. So it's right. it's unlike anything you've really smelled before. Once you well, detail for a while, you get used to it. But Yeah, it, well, it smells, you know, if you go buy a hair salon that's having a special on perms, it's going to smell the same. But nonetheless, the... Um, the perforated synthetic decontamination towel combined with the, either iron remover, ceramic gloss, or uh, quick beads just makes it easy, simple, and no, you are not going to mar your paint if you follow our instructions. And those instructions are simple. No pressure on the towel. Keep it lubricated. And uh, fold it into fours. Yeah. Uh, yep. Reduce pressure points. Basically, what causes marring is pressure points, dirt on the surface, which we've did a contact wash before we do the decontamination, improper lubrication, and a clay bar actually has abrasive in it. It's designed to mar your paint. There's no getting around that. Uh, you can, if you're very gentle, clay a car with a mild clay bar and not get much marring or get any marring if you're really good at it. But with our perforated synthetic decontamination towel, someone that's never done this before can pick it up, follow our instructions, get a beautiful result and not have marred their paint. Also, if you haven't clay barred your car in a while, it is a lot of work. Yeah. Like it, it, I, I've mentioned this on a few other podcasts, but it's like, it's just a lot of hand motion to cover that entire car because the clay uh -huh. is this big, whereas your yeah. towel is this big. And it right. just, once you use our clay towel, the decontamination towel, and you compare it to the clay bar experience, like mostly pros, you know, some of the cons I would just say is like, if you have incredibly heavy contamination, yeah. Like you're going to be tempted to use pressure on the towel and that's going to get you into trouble. That's where you do not want to use pressure with the towel because you can absolutely yeah. mar the paint if you do it. Whereas if you have a real heavy grade clay bar, you know, you're going to have to polish afterwards anyway, but yeah. it might be good for something like overspray. And, and you can get to heavy overspray with our towel. We've shown uh, different ways in a video. Ivan, it incorporates using many steps, right? Including, um, tree sap remover. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But, no, uh, well, mostly, no, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you, but not yeah. with the towel. But you're no, you're doing step by step by step by step. Yeah, exactly. One of them yeah. is tree sap remover. Let it dwell. I believe we agitate it in with the towel. Then we rinse yeah. off. Water, then we do spot, water spot remover. remover. Yeah. Agitate in, rinse off, and then we're doing the towel, and we're just being really patient, and we're just hanging out for a while. And, and yeah. sometimes, like if you have a heavy duty clay bar, you know you're gonna have to polish afterwards. You have heavy duty stuff on your paint. That's the only time I'm like, eh, I kind of miss a clay bar. Other than that, yeah. I don't want to see him. No, exactly. Yeah. Um, I like to keep it real, as always. All right. One more. And then we're going to get to the the, the life-changing one. And it's the 555 method. I don't know how many comments we got over the last year on that 555 video, but maybe you can explain that a little bit. I'm with DIY Detail. It started with a short, and that short has got millions of views. And if you read the comments, there's a lot of people going, I tried this, it works great, it's spectacular, it's phenomenal. And then other people going, that's not a scratch. Or I still see the scratch, or it was more than five seconds. We did a whole video explaining and going in more in depth into what the technique is and how it works and why it works, et cetera. But what we wanna say here is, if you haven't tried it, give it a try. 
and it's going to change the way you detail. And not saying that as a holy crap, this is incredible. It's just going to shorten down your correction steps. If you just have that one scratch on a panel that you need to go after, you can go after it with the 555 method. It's safe, it's easy, it's simple. It doesn't take a lot of time. And once you actually try it and see why and how it works, it's something you're going to be incorporating in almost every correction job that you do. The 555 method, five pounds of pressure for five seconds on speed yeah, five. Exactly. Roughly. You know, it's not an exact science. Basically, you don't want to create heat. You want to put enough pressure that the machine, uh, long stroke DA is the best machine for this. So like a 21 millimeter or our upcoming 25 millimeter, even better. Uh, 15 millimeter can do it, but a 21 or a 25 is better. But a long stroke machine, enough pressure that you're not stalling the pad, but you're just on the verge of stalling the pad. Five seconds, and the reason we say five seconds, you don't want to create any heat. And it takes five or six seconds for that abrasive action to start creating heat. So there, and speed five on the machine, basically you want a high rate of speed. There may be people out there who don't quite understand why you wouldn't create heat when polishing. So paint is a plastic. So the, and we're actually not polishing paint anymore. We're polishing clear coat 99% of the time. That clear coat and the, or the paint system on a car, if you prefer, is plastic. And what happens when you create heat in plastic, A, it swells. So we're hiding defects by, may, by swelling the paint. Uh, you know, it acts like Botox, basically. The other thing so you that might we're actually, doing- this, this could be intimidating for people. So you might actually be hiding the defects, thinking that they're gone. Yeah. So you can't even trust your own eyes at that point. So it's like, if you don't create heat, you won't have to deal with this Botox effect on the paint. So no, that's exactly. another reason why, especially if you're not real experienced, you don't want to get that paint hot. Yeah, but hot paint also does a couple other things that work against you. The abrasive, instead of going across the paint, shearing it and cutting it, the abrasive that's in the polish, now is grabbing and rolling. So when you heat up plastic, it becomes soft. And when it becomes soft, it's not becoming pliable like we think. It's actually, you're not cutting it as quickly and as efficiently as you are with cold. So, you know, right now we're in the middle of winter. I'm in, today I'm in Michigan and it's cold outside. Well, if I wasn't such a, a wuss and was afraid of cold, polishing outside on a day like today would be spectacular because you get your results so much faster because it's cold. I just never really liked polishing cold paint. It always felt like it acted weird to me. Well, it polishes faster. So really? You, yeah, because you're you're getting a lot you're getting more done quickly because the colder it is, the harder it is because it's a plastic, and the colder it is, the more the abrasive can work. Now, conversely to that, your pad washer has water in it; it doesn't like cold. Uh, the abrasives or the, you know the gold standard polish below sixty degrees, it's not necessarily a happy temperature for it. You can go down to fifty, but much below that. You're just dealing with, you know, a cranky chemical at that point. Yeah. Uh, 70 degrees is ideal for me. 90 is just, you know, starting to get comfortable. But that being said, the colder the paint is, the easier it is to correct. And the, the faster you're going to cut. Why, when the paint was really cold, like in my old shop, would I get like holograms, not holograms, but little like circular halos when I was trying to finish down? Like it was so finicky in the cold. Uh, it was, it was yeah. like, I could tell the temperature was affecting this because it wasn't normal. Right. Because now your polish, the abrasives in the polish are actually cutting more than what you were used to. So that's why you're using a, a DA. And when you're using that DA, you're getting hazing, you're getting micro marring because those abrasives are able to cut more and cut faster when it's cold. That's so interesting. That makes sense. So it's ideal to, to polish different than coat because i always tell people 40 degrees and above you're fine to use our family coating like it just has to be about 40 degrees but with polishing you'd say closer to 50 and above yeah just because the chemicals in even with the coating you know you can go down to 40 but 50 and up is much better uh that being said yeah can you polish yes uh you know someone that's 
older generation GTRs that have the self-healing paint from Nissan. Those were vehicles that were very, very difficult to correct because any sort of heat that you created made it difficult because of the self-healing aspect of it. What I always recommend to people when they're dealing with one of those vehicles is put ice cubes in your pad washer. So you want to cool that pad down as much as possible, short cycle the polish because you don't want to create any heat. And if you can wait till January and do it outside, put on your, you know, your snowmobile suit, your mittens, Jeez. your gloves, your toque, the whole, or beanie, I think you guys call it. But hey, Canadians watching, you know what a toque is. Uh, but hey, you know, the, the knit hat. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Yeah, put all that, you know, your earmuffs, get out there. That will be the best experience you'll ever have polishing a GTR or anything with the Nissan selfie. I think they had it on a few Maximas, but most of, the, most of it was on a GTR. So for uh, the detailer out there who thinks they know most things, uh, what year will these GTRs uh, have self-healing? Because that, that could easily stomp a detailer. You know, it's your first time for everything, right? And yeah. maybe the first time you see a GTR, you don't think much of it. The customer says, oh, it's got this special paint. You're like, whatever, I know paint. And then you yeah. get into trouble. So what were the years on the self-healing? I have no idea. Uh, I'll look it up while we're checking. Yeah, well, with the Nissan, you open the hood and there's a sticker right there telling you it has self-healing paint because they oh. put it. They had it on the 370, uh, 350 or 370 Z. They had some on the GTR. They had some on the Maxima. And uh, depending on what market you're in, what country you're in, they may they may have had it on different vehicles as well. So just open the hood, you'll see a sticker there. Okay. Well, we'll just yeah. leave it at that then, because I uh, don't want to get too distracted. I want to stay on focus, uh, on putting here and say focused. Yeah, oh, but if you know, write it in the comments. Yeah, the please do. Point. I did a quick little Google search. I didn't see anything. I'm like, ah, this would take more time. I want to do this right. Having fun, Ivan. And th this is the comment that, like, despite some of, the, you know, we get the we get the hate, we get the criticism, we get the positive, we get the questions. You get it all, right? When you when you uh, when you've grown and and people are paying attention, and I'm grateful for all of it. Um, for as much vitriol as we got for the 555 method, uh, persistent, consistent over the last year and a half is just, we've helped them have more fun. Yeah. And one of the premises in starting this company was we wanted to make detailing fun again. We wanted the, the parents to be in the driveway with their kids, washing the family car, having fun. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, riding my bicycle down the street on Saturday morning, the dads would be out there washing cars. And it would be not every driveway, but a lot of driveways would be wet or have a car wet and soapy and being washed because people took pride and had fun doing it. And over the years, overthinking detailing has become sort of a competitive sport uh, to the point where people are just, you know, overthinking things way too much. And we've tried to make it as simple and as fun as possible. So that's why the names of our products, the name basically tells you what it does. It's not a secret, it's not some code name, it's, oh, it's incredible suds. Hey, guess what, it's gonna foam. It's ceramic gloss. Oh, it has ceramic in it, it's gonna make my paint glossy. Uh, quick beads, you know, they all have names that indicate pretty much what they are. You know, tire lotion, it gives you an idea what it does. So we're not trying to make you guess at what the product is. We've added fragrances that we personally like and, but they're not overpowering and they're not underwhelming either. They're just nice. They're there. They work, they do the job. So we're trying to make detailing fun. We have nice chemicals. We have quality sprayers. There's nothing more frustrating than having a product, putting the sprayer on it and the so sprayer true. doesn't work or the sprayer cuts into your hand and causes you a blister. Uh, whatever. So we have high quality telco sprayers. We have high quality bottles. The labels are easy to read. We have a QR code on every label that brings you to the SDS sheet that brings you to our website, obviously, and brings you to these videos. So where you can learn on how to use the products. And we don't have products that you don't need. We don't have a wheel cleaner. We have all clean for that. You don't need a dedicated wheel cleaner. A wheel cleaner is just an APC with a different label. Uh, you know, I'm generalizing here, but- Shots Facebook, fired. Yeah, no, not shots fired, but yes, you can have a dedicated wheel cleaner if you want, but it's not a necessity. Uh, you know, with iron remover and with all clean, 
You can just about do any wheel you can ever think of. The other aspect of that is if you're having fun and you're washing your car on a weekly basis or every two weeks, you don't even need all clean on your wheels. Just the rinseless wash of the incredible suds will take will do a great job on your wheels. You don't need those harsh chemicals. We don't have harsh chemicals. We There's no need. We don't have a wheel acid. Uh, our APC is a true APC. It's not a degreaser. It's an actual all-purpose cleaner. That makes it safe to use. And it's highly concentrated. When you buy it in the gallon form, the highest concentration we want you to use it at is 15 to 1. So you're getting 16 gallons of product to use when you're buying that one gallon. And if you're using it for interiors, 30 to 1 is all you need. So you're getting 31 gallons instead of, you know, you're buying one gallon and getting 31 gallons of liquid to clean your interiors. Uh, our rinseless wash just does whatever you need it to do, it pretty much does. Yeah. Uh, our, you know, our crystal gla clear glass cleaner, it's not one we talk about a lot, but it just works. It's simple, it's easy, it's effective, and it's fun to use. Uh, our coatings, you know, we've made, we've made coatings that anyone can use. If you can apply a wax, you can apply our coatings. They're not hard to use. And uh, if you do screw up, they're easy to fix as well. And that's something that a lot of people are afraid of that I've never done a coating before. I've read online that they're super difficult and finicky and it takes skill and practice and no, it doesn't. Just get over that. Stop overthinking it, get a bottle of coating, prep your car. And you know, we've, I think we've done two or three videos where we've coated a car without polishing it. And the first time we did it, we got a lot of negative feedback. People saying, if you're not polishing the car, you're not doing it correctly, you're, you know, you're, you're short yep. changing the customer, et cetera, et cetera. Well, no, if you're happy with your paint, it's your car, it's not anyone else's car. So if you are happy with the paint on your car and you don't feel it needs to be corrected, it doesn't need to be corrected. Sure, polishing is gonna do a deep cleaning on your paint. It is gonna bring gloss, no matter how new your car is. But if your car, if you're looking at your car and say, I just want to protect this car. That's all I want is protection. I want it to bead. I want it to sheet. I want it to be chemically resistant. I want it to make it easier to clean. Yeah, go ahead. Put a ceramic coating on it. It's not going to damage your car. The ceramic coating doesn't know corrected paint from uncorrected paint. So you don't need to polish your car. You don't need to do a paint correction. And we did a video on a, a new Ram 1500 brand new white Ram. We know the owner of this truck and we know that he drives it through a brush car wash at least three or four times a week. He's got one of those, you know, go as often as you want passes and he does that. And the only reason he wants a coating on his truck is that when he drives out of that car wash with those blowers, it actually dries the truck. He does have drips going down the road. It works for him. It works for I, what yeah. I think has made it more fun for me too is just foam rinse foam. Like yeah. I don't have to think about it. Even as a professional, I felt like it was always say what you want about me. I, I don't think I've always been the most organized or, you know, I, I have fun doing it. Yeah, but exactly. for me, it's just like when, when you kind of taught me the foam rinse foam method and I, it kind of clicked for me, it's like, okay, foam all clean on the wheels. I mean, I know you do wheels first, right? But foam yeah, all yeah. clean on the wheels, let it dwell then do incredible suds over everything. And then I get to do in the wheels and then I rinse the paint in the wheels and then I foam the paint up again. Right. And then I do my contact wash. It's just like foam, rinse, foam, contact wash. For some reason that just really helped me. And then wash like in the same way every time. And, and once you kind of learn that system, it just yeah. makes it more fun. Cause then you, you're like coloring within the lines a little bit. It's uh, you still can be right. creative and, and achieve results but you have a sense of I should do it this way and it actually makes sense and it works. Right. And there's no apprehension. You know, a lot of people, like I said, detailing is, or, you know, overthinking is like a competitive sport in detailing. People just go on and on and on and they come up with these methods that are more and more complicated and they just add more steps and more steps. And they're thinking that, okay, well, this chemical might do this to the paint. So if it might be doing this, I need to do this to counteract it. And I... stop it. Washing your car should be fun. Washing your car should be an activity that you want to do. It shouldn't cause you any stress whatsoever. It should be a stress relief for you. And 
that's what we're trying to bring back is make car washing, make detailing something that's fun to do. And you look at the results and you're going, yeah, I did that. That's good. And you know, if you're a real detailing enthusiast, you're walking away from your car, you hit the lock button, you turn around and you look at your car again and go, wow, that's nice. And then you keep walking. But if you're not, if your car isn't drawing you to turn around and look at it again, you might need to detail it just a little more. And we're giving you tips to make it fun. And that's a beautiful thing. So yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait for the weather to get a little nicer again. I want to get outside and use the foam can. Uh, this winter is already getting a little brutal, but we hope you have yeah. a garage. We hope you've been able to learn. Hey, you know what? Here's one tip. If you're in the winter and you're wondering how to wash using the tunnel wash, I haven't used this awesome video. It's the coin op car wash uh, special just... and it has like yeah. tens of thousands of views. People are loving it. Go check that one out, guys. Have fun. We appreciate you. Happy New Year. Yes, Happy New Year. (laughs) 